Saying goodbye is never easy, but I found a way of being encouraged, filling my heart with hope when I was creating a gift for my father who was battling the last stages of terminal illness. This is the creation process of a board book which I transformed into a work of art with Bible verses. I invite you to my journey of finding hope in the middle of difficult times. If you're new here, my name is Aiko. This is Papercut Prayers, and I create art inspired by the Bible, inspired by the Word of God. And in this channel, I like to talk about spiritual things that God is showing me, the things that I'm learning from the Bible and from life. The things I'm going to share with you may be a little bit heavy because I'll be talking about death and the end of life. So if you're not in the mood for a heavy conversation, feel free to look through this video, see the techniques that I used, and maybe you can use the ideas in your own art journaling or if you want to make a gift like I am doing here. So my father was diagnosed with terminal cancer about six months ago and was given a few months to live. And during that time, he chose not to have chemotherapy. So after an initial surgery, he was doing very well. He was going about life as usual. But then at the beginning of this year, he started to decline very quickly. And I received a phone call saying that I should come immediately because his health was quickly failing. So those of you who have been around for a while know that I visited Japan, which is where I come from, for the first time in 12 years last year. It's not easy for me to get away because I'm helping my husband in the ministry. I have two children at home and three children studying abroad. And there are many, many responsibilities that I have. So when I got the call to visit my father, it was not very easy for me to immediately book a flight and get on the plane. So there were many things I needed to think about. And most of all, I wanted to be a blessing to my parents. They wanted me there for his birthday, which was some ways away. And my brothers called me on separate times saying I should come immediately. So it was a step of faith to decide to come later rather than earlier. And so I did have a little more time to finish this book. This was a book I started quite a while ago, and I had this theme in my mind that it would be something about the passage of time. So the book would start in the darkness, and the day will get brighter, and it'll be midday, and it'll be sunset and dusk. That was the idea I had when I was making this page. And as you have seen, I was just sticking different things into the book. I'm painting different pages with different colors, corresponding with the time that I wanted to show on that page. And since my father loves mountains and plants and nature, I'm trying to put these images together on every page. And as I'm creating this book, I'm thinking and I'm praying, just reflecting on what the Lord wants me to share, what words I can put in this book, what Bible verses I can put which will bring hope and encouragement to my father. The images I've gotten are mostly from magazine clippings. I've just stuck them in random places around the book. Images of birds, images of the sky and clouds. And then over that, I've applied paint because I knew where I add words, I will need to have some space with lighter colors so the words will show. Here I'm using some napkins, which I cut out and I'm going to stick because my father loves orchids and flowers and different images of nature. Mountains are very deeply connected to my father's life. And later I'll be sharing his testimony of how he became a Christian. He grew up in the mountains of central Japan and lived a lot of his life in the Himalayas near Mount Everest. Mountains are also symbolic to me and I love using the imagery of mountains in my own art. I also spent a lot of my childhood in the Himalayas, and to me, it's a reminder of my spiritual journey. Mountains are so majestic, and they point upwards to heaven. They're beautiful, they reflect the light, depending on the time of day, and sometimes they're hidden by clouds, but they're always there. It's a reminder to me that God is always there above the clouds, even when it's a foggy day and you can't see around the corner. You know that the mountains are still standing. 
it's just a matter of time when the clouds go away, driven away by the wind and the sun comes out. And you know, and you see the mountains again, as beautiful as ever. And in the Bible, it says even the mountains can be removed, just like everything else on this earth. But God is the one constant force in the universe, which can never be moved and exists forever. Here I'm cutting out butterflies from scrap paper. And the butterfly is a significant image for me because when I was younger, I once wrote a poem for school on the topic of butterflies. And my father really liked that poem. So he kept that poem and he decided because he likes collecting stamps on different themes, he decided to collect butterfly stamps for me. He has stamp collections based on birds and plants and different things. And the significance of the butterfly is also that in Christian art, the butterfly represents the resurrection. And so I just thought it might be nice to fill this book with butterflies on different pages. And so one afternoon, I just spent creating butterflies out of butterfly stamps and painted paper. And I didn't really know how many butterflies I'd need, but I just started having fun with it. And I created a whole bunch of butterflies which I didn't end up using in the book after all, except for maybe on one page. But here you see the process of how you can make butterfly images using just one stamp or different sizes of stamps. You can color them by hand or just use colored paper like I did. And so I kind of got carried away and made all kinds of butterflies. Some butterflies I cut out from paper I already had and some of them are stamped. Some of them are cut out from magazines or whatever. And so I just am placing it around this page. I chose a few and I ended up not using all those butterflies that I had cut out. The other thing I did in this book was uh, that I thought I'd do was that using the magazine images and landscapes, I wanted to use paint to kind of uh, blend those photos into the page. And that's what I will be doing also, as you are going to see. I use gel medium to stick in all the butterflies. And I like gel medium because it doesn't have a smell and it coats everything very nicely. I really believe that God is a miracle working God. And as the Bible clearly says, I am the Lord, your healer. I do believe in healing as part of God's nature and part of God's plan. When you read the New Testament, you read about Jesus healing all kinds of people with all kinds of sicknesses. And the Bible says he went around healing and doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. As I was saying, death is a heavy subject, but we all must face it. The central point of the Bible is that we have one life on this earth and that we have to choose. If we are going to believe in Jesus, who gave us eternal life and took away our sins, who gives us a way to be with God for eternity. The Bible clearly tells us that this is the hope that we have in him because of the resurrection of Jesus. We have a living hope. I saw in my father that even in sickness, he had this peace and a confidence that God would take care of him. And he said many times that he is at peace and has no fear of death. He knew he was on the way to heaven, being very old and having lived a full life. And he knew that he would come to a place of rest with God. My father grew up in a traditional Japanese home, and this is his testimony of how he came to faith in Christ. His father died in the war before he was born. And so while he was in the womb, his mother was grieving. My father grew up without his father, being raised by his mother. And when he was a teenager, he met a missionary who explained to him that we have a father God in heaven. Having grown up without a father, this idea really touched his heart. And he came to believe that God is our father in heaven, that he sent his son Jesus to this earth to reveal the father to all people. He traveled around the world and ended up in the U.S. to study linguistics and became a Bible translator. And there... In the U.S., he met my mother, who had come there from Germany, and together they served God for 40 years. And they loved sharing the gospel. They loved serving people. 
and all through his life. My father was a person who was passionate about the truth and found joy in reading the Bible and sharing it with everyone he saw. In the end, what remains is faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, the Bible says. And it's so true. The people you have loved, those who are touched by your love, and those who remember your actions of love and words of love, those are the things that remain. And that's the legacy you leave behind. And it made me think of my own life, making me wonder how to show more love towards people and how God can use my life to share the love of God with others. Whatever the situation may be, I do continue to believe in the goodness of God, in the miraculous power of God, and I do see many amazing miracles have happened. For example, the way that my father was able to handle his situation, the way he was able to speak about it and be very candid and be very open about what was ahead of him. It really amazed me. And maybe some of you have testimonies about people in similar situations. When they're faced with terminal illness, how does faith impact that situation? I would love to hear testimonies from you about how God has helped you in situations like this. And it's something that I've really been learning through these experiences. If there are testimonies that you have about how God has helped you deal with other people's uh, situations, how God has helped you overcome grief or parting, dealing with terminal illnesses in your family, facing the end of life, it would be very good if you can share in the comments below. Because I've found when situations like this come up, it's not something I can approach other people or it's not something I would like to search for on the internet. But when I do come across people sharing their testimonies, it does shed some light on the situation. And I feel like it's very helpful to know actually what people are thinking. So I welcome you to add in the comments if there are things you can share that will encourage people and uplift other people dealing with situations of terminal illness or family members who are departing. As you can see, all these pages, um, I'm just working one by one, but I'm thinking of this book as a whole. So even though I didn't record the process of doing the whole book, different pages that I work on, I'm thinking as part of a whole. So this page, I'm thinking about the middle of the day. So I'm trying to use brighter colors. I'm trying to uh, use colors of midday yellows and whites and bright clouds. And just using whatever materials I found, I'm trying to create the effect of fluffy white clouds. And as you can see, I was trying to extend that photo that I stuck, that magazine picture, and trying to make it blend into the rest of the page. These are ideas that you can use on your art journal pages or any creative project that you would like to do. And if you do create something like this, I'd love to see it. Please tag me on Instagram and share. This is a very easy way to create clouds. And it's just a discovery I made while I was making this page. I love clouds and I love creating clouds, but this is the first time I'm actually happy with the way I made these clouds on this page. The finger is quite a useful tool to make those round shapes of the clouds. So I'm pretty happy with the way this page turned out. It's one of my favorite spreads in the entire book. And as you can see, a lot of the stuff that I had scribbled and pasted at the outset in the very beginning just all eventually got covered up and it looks very, very different from how it started. Here I'm adding white splatters as well, which is something I love that effect. And for the white splatters to stand out, it's good to also have some dark areas where the white splatters can show up a little bit better. I'm on another page now and I'm trying to add some sky colors. Again, on one side of the page, I have a little um, thin piece of paper which I stuck in from a magazine and I'm trying to match that sky color 
and painting over that magazine cutout, trying to make a noonday sun, noonday sky. And I later thought maybe it was a bit too dark and it should have been a little brighter. But anyway, I extended that blue line and making it like a line of an ocean. And in the foreground, I thought I'll just make part of the land. And in the land, I thought maybe I'll put some plants. And that's what I'm doing here, using greens and yellows and just making some blades of grass. And under this page, I had stuck different things and scribbled different things, and I ended up covering most of it with white gesso. You can see a few faint lines, which were there from my initial uh, things that I had done to the pages. And I'm just making blades of grass like for the foreground. And since there's some pink on the edges of this page, I just took some pink paint and I thought I'll just make some more, add some more pink to this page by diluting that pink paint and splattering it around. And while I'm doing that, I'm adding the same color to other pages. This page also has a magazine picture on one side and then I extended it with paint. I just thought I'll add this pink splatter, kind of like an effect of flowers, and then I'm just adding it to the other pages also, just to give it a unifying effect. And as you can see, I've worked on other pages in different at different times, and I'm, I'm just adding pink splatters randomly. And I know that the paint is wet. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with the wet paint sticking to both sides. So just throughout the book, I'm just adding this one color. And these scenes are sunset scenes as the day gets darker. This is the way I just let the paint dry and I can come back to it a different time. I've worked on the cover a little bit and you can see the progression of light, dark to light from the edges. And I've torn off the cover and slightly painted a little bit. And so for the color cover, I created a digital piece of art using images of my own artwork. I scanned the paper cut, some paper cut birds. And what I decided to do with this book was that I was going to add paper cut birds throughout the whole book. First, I thought it would be butterflies, but I changed my mind. And so in my iPad, I created um, a piece of art using different images and colors from the book itself making like a digital collage and I printed it out and my printer wasn't very good it has these lines but I just thought that adds to the effect so the cover is kind of a combination of different images and colors from this book and from my other art and these are the paper cup birds that I created and since my father was turning 86 I cut out 86 birds I looked at different birds from moving pictures and videos and I just cut out different shapes. Sometimes it even looks abstract because they're flying in formation. And just thought of the image of a bird flying is a very um, meaningful image because my father loves birds. His name actually means bird feather. And so when I was in Japan also, I, there were, I was in the snow, I saw the birds, and I just thought, what an appropriate image. And in this book, I stuck a bird on every page. I stuck the digital printout onto the cover and I'm smoothing it out. I stuck it with gel medium like I was sticking everything else. And I really am happy with the way the cover turned out. It's like a crow looking out at other birds in the sky. And it kind of made me think of a story. It's the story of how we start off life. Like a single bird, we start off alone. Along the way, we find friends, we find companionship, and our social circles and our horizons expand. 
Our influence also expands into the lives of other people. We become adults and start to take responsibility for ourselves as well as for others, for our family, for the community around us. We find purpose in life by finding ways to contribute to the world. And so that's the idea that came to me while I was making this book. I didn't have all these ideas as a plan to start with, but one by one, the ideas came to me. And here I'm just gluing down the cover. I'll be reinforcing the spine with some tape, which I didn't show in my process. There are many, many parts of this bookmaking process that I didn't film, and it seems like it is it was a bit haphazard it was all very unplanned and spontaneous but in the end it all came together in a way that was very satisfying i came up with different verses that i was going to write um, add to this book and initially i hand wrote 20 verses because there are 20 spreads and after I did that, I thought to myself that my father being Japanese, I would like to add Japanese words to it. And so I thought, well, my Japanese writing is not very good. So I ended up printing every single verse in Japanese and English. And here is the final flip through of the book I created. It starts off with the image of a single bird. And the verse says, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On the second page, there are two paper cup birds. My father met my mother, and then he had one child, so his family increased to three people. And then he had another child, and there are four. And on the next page, the family increased to five, because I was born. So you see how the morning progresses from dawn and then the sun comes out and the light becomes brighter. On this page, I added some shiny paint. And this is like the mood of the early morning. On this page, there are six birds flying. And then it becomes daytime. It becomes brighter. The verse says, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You can see that I added glittery paint to different pages in this book. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Here on this page, there are many birds on the line. And after a while, I stopped counting the birds, but I just stuck in all the birds that I made. And here is the crow looking up into the sky on a grassy beach. I like the effect of different paints and parts where the, even the paint has peeled. This gives an interesting effect. And here's that page with the butterflies and the clouds. And here are more clouds. This is the middle of the day on a bright, cloudy sky. Then the light changes as the day wears on. It becomes a little bit darker. Here is, I stuck a napkin of the great wave, and there are birds in the water. And it talks about through the water, God is with us and he will not, the rivers will not overflow us. We can walk through fire and he will still be with us. Even to our old age, God is with us. And here, the sunset colors. And this is also more sunset. And the night sky is starting to show. He who promised is faithful. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. And in the night sky, I painted an apple tree or a fruit tree with glittery paints, which is shiny, kind of changes color, and I really love this effect. And as you can see, my pages are all covered up with paint. There are different layers of paper stuck there, but you can't see the way it was at the beginning. It's completely different. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul, sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. So a lightning kind of reminds you of the ripping veil in the tabernacle or in the temple when jesus died the veil tore into giving us access to god that's the image i was thinking of here on this page there are two birds flying into the distance on this page it's the night sky with the moon 
We are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And finally, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. These are fireworks in this night sky. And finally, the last page has one bird flying off. Because at the end of life, we are one. We alone have to go and leave this earth alone. So this is the book I was able to make with its binding, with all the colors from darkness to light and then to darkness again. And I was very, very pleased with the way it turned out. And I was so um, pleased with this that I wanted to make copies of this. And this is something I did when I went to Japan. There are photocopy machines in convenience stores. And so I made multiple copies of this book. And I also wanted to show you how good this copy machine is. This was in my parents' village. And the copy machine was so good that I made many copies. And you can compare how the copy turned out exactly like the original. The inset photo is the original. And what I'm flipping is the photocopy. I just stuck the pages together with glue. And I was just so amazed at the quality of the print. You can even see the glue stuck on those pages. It just looks so real. But in the larger screen, what I'm flipping through is the photocopied version. And I wanted to compare and show you how good the quality of printing is in Japan. It was just another fun thing to do when I went and I was able to make extra copies to keep and to give away. So this was the gift I was able to make for my father. And in the end, when I put it in his hands, he was so happy to receive it. The words in the book mean, some, mean a lot to him and he was so encouraged. He read those words over and over and he really appreciated what God has done for him and the words that God speaks in his word. And just like a bird travels through the sky, our souls will be in the sky meeting the Lord in heaven. On the day I was there, it snowed in Japan, in my father's village. I saw birds in the sky. I saw the gray sky, but everything seemed so peaceful. And the path ahead, even though we are unsure of what is ahead, God has everything in his hand. What a glorious and beautiful thought that God is always with us and he never leaves us.